Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode we started working on our killer boar, on our simple AI enemy. And what we did is we built ourselves the asset, the actual graphics and our animator and everything we need to actually make this creature actually work. Uh, and so far, so good. It currently works exactly like our spiky rock or our spikes or whatever else you've created as a stationary enemy. Uh, it's able to hit the character, the able, character's able to kill it. Uh, a whole bunch of things have already been done. In today's episode, I'd like to finish this guy off by writing the AI uh, scripts. All right, so let's get started. So with everything set up, guys, find your killer boar, click on him, after that, go to your scripts folder. We're going to be adding, well, go to your scripts folder first of all, go to killer boar. We're going to be adding a new script to this boar. Basically, we're going to add a script that's going to control the movement of this boar. All right, go into add component, new script, and say, let's call it enemy movement controller. All right, boom, there we go. I've got an enemy movement controller. I'm going to double click and open it up. Okay, here we are in Mono Develop, and we've got ourselves a nice clean blank script to start with. Like normal, so basically how this character, what I want to happen with this, with this enemy, uh, the enemy is going to be stationary, meaning it's not wandering around. Uh, it will have the ability to flip back and forth, uh, kind of looking around on its own, and, and that's going to make it appear a little more alive. Uh, so it's going to flip back and forth while it's idling. Uh, I want it to be able to turn towards our enemy when the enemy enters into uh, enters into a certain distance, and we've already set that up within our with our trigger uh, of our collider. We've already set that up in the trigger collider. Uh, so if it comes within that that triggered collider, uh, then I want the the my enemy to turn towards the player and run and charge the player. All right. So there's a handful of things that we need to do. First of all, uh, we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need a public uh, variable, a float, and this is just going to be the speed at which the enemy can run. All right. Uh, it's public. You guys can make adjustments to it. We'll decide on what that's going to be in a few minutes. But it's public, and I can change it any time in the inspector. All right. Uh, I'm going to need access to our animator. Uh, we already know that. It's an animator. It's already got an animator on it. Uh, we're going to need access to our animator, and uh, we will call this uh, enemy <laughs> animator. Animator. All right, our enemy animator. So this is going to give us access to the animator and allow us to change our animation states. All right, great. That's what we wanted. Uh, there's a couple of things. Like I said, we want to be able to adjust um, the direction that this character is facing, that this enemy is facing. So the first thing I'm going to add is a public uh, game object, game object that I'm going to call um, enemy graphic. Doesn't really matter what you call it. And basically, what this is, the enemy graphic is going to be. I'm 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 adding this script to the top layer to the parent the absolute top layer of this hierarchy, and the simple AI creature is actually the location of the of the uh, of the uh, graphic itself that I want to flip. <laughs> I had a complete brain fart there. So this is the actual thing I want to flip around. I want to flip this thing back and forth. All right. So I'm going to give a simple reference. A simple reference to it right here, all right, to the thing that I actually want to flip. It's probably not necessary to do it this way here. You could probably just flip the entire node, but uh, the way I've set up the the running, uh, I only want to flip part of it, all right. So that's that. Um, first of all, we have to know. First of all, can this guy flip? Can uh, so it's going to be a bool. Can flip. I'm going to call it, and it's going to be set to true to start off with. Uh, can flip means. What I, how I want this to work is if the boar is charging at the character, it can't flip. It can't actually turn around. It's got to keep on charging the character until it either hits the character or it falls off of the edge or the character leaves its its aggression zone. All right. So if can flip is equal to true, then our, our guy can flip back and forth. But if can flip is equal to false, then I don't want him to be able to turn at all. I want him to keep doing whatever he's doing. All right. So the next thing I want is a bool. And this is exactly the same as we did the other guy, like our, our main character facing right. 
and that's going to be equal to false to start off with. That's how he's designed. He's actually le looking left, false to start off with. Uh, and that's going to work uh, exactly the same way as our facing right did for uh, for our player character. All right, if he's facing right, it's true, and if he's facing left, it's false. All right. How often can this? How often, when this character is idle, can it flip back and forth? All right, that's another thing I want to know. This is going to be a float, and w oops, I spelled that wrong. Float, and uh, we'll call it a uh, flip, flip time. And it's going to be some value. Let's say every five seconds, uh, this is 5f, not 5 seconds. Every five seconds, uh, there's a possibility that the, that, the play, that the actual graphic might flip and he'll look the other direction. All right? And that's just going to be just graphically. It's, it has nothing to do with detection or anything else in our current design. Uh, the the next time the character can flip, so this is going to be a float, uh, and we will call this next flip chance. And uh, this is uh, when the next time it can actually flip. So I don't want to just like flop back and forth, flop back like back and forth, back and forth. Uh, I want it to you know hit a certain amount of time and then that's it. Okay, and then it, it keeps looking that direction. All right, so the next flip chance is zero f, uh, meaning it can flip right away. Uh, and then after that, we're going to adjust that flip time, okay? And there's a few more things I want to add in here. There's a couple more of the of the things that we're going to need. We're going to need for attacking. Uh, we're going to need a bunch of variables for attacking here. Uh, first of all, public float. And let's call this charge time. Um, I don't want the character to enter into the the zone of attack and for this thing to immediately start charging because that's not going to give the character an opportunity to uh, to really prepare. Uh, so maybe we can set up a charge time like uh, this thing will start charging one second after after the ca the player has entered its space or or who knows some kind of aggression time. But that's what that is okay. Public float charge time. Uh, the start charge time. So float start charge start charge I call it uh, start charge time just so I know exactly um, what time it's actually gonna start running so once you've entered once the character has entered the uh, entered the time zone um, it it's gonna wait this amount of time and it's gonna determine this is gonna determine when that time is alright so that's what start charge time is um, the last one we're gonna have in here is whether or not we're actually charging bool and it's a, a true or false is either idle or is charging charging okay uh, and the actually, actually we need one more thing we need a the rigid body because we have to and that's more of a movement well that's I guess that's charging that's that's tagging we need a rigid body 2d um, and we'll call this uh, enemy RB for enemy rigid body and this is going to be a reference to our rigid body uh, and then allow us to actually manipulate the the velocity that this rigid body is acting at. All right, I think that's all that we currently need. All right, I think that's all we need. Uh, we're going to have to go into our start, and we're going to need to, of course, um, set up a few initialization, some initialization here. Uh, our animator, uh, which is right there, our enemy animator, animator, is going to be equal to, and we have to find this now. It's not if we take a look right here, our animator is not actually in the killer bore. It's one step down. It's right here in the simple AI. So we don't want to, in the past, we always said get component. Uh, and this time here, we want to say get component in children, all right, because it's one layer below. And once again, it is our animator. Animator. Close it, close it, bam, bam. All right, and then the other thing we want to find is our rigid body. So enemy RB uh, is going to be equal to, and this is in the actual layer that we're in. So we're just going to get component, get component, and it is our rigid body 2D. Close it, close it, and boom, and boom. All right, perfect. So that is all the initialization we're going to need. Uh, 
But now we have to start looking at the actual code. Uh, there's a couple of things we, we're going to try and figure out here. First of all, in our update, we're going to use this function. We haven't been using it a lot. We're going to use this function this time. Uh, it's in here that we're going to determine whether or not uh, our, our guy can flip back and forth. All right, that's what we're going to do here. So if time dot time, so this is the current time uh, on, of our gameplay, is greater than, and if it's greater than our next flip, what did I call it? Next flip chance, then, is that how I spelled it? Yep. Then, uh, what I want to happen is I want, boop, I want this character to possibly flip. So if, we're going to be using a, a, a function here called random, oops, dot ran, range, sorry, I almost said random dot random, range, uh, and this is going to give me a random number between a specific range, between 0 and 10. 0 comma 10. All right, so and if I'm set, it, so it's going to give me a number between 0 and 10. All right, if that number is greater than or equal to 5, you can choose any number here because this is basically a percent chance. Then what I want to do, if that's that, then what I want to do, I don't need this, what I want to do is I want to flip my facing and this is going to be a, a function we write, flip facing, in exactly the same way we did with our, our character. All right. If it's not greater than 5, or if it's less than 5, then it's not going to flip. But if it is greater than 5, then we're going to flip. All right. The next thing we have to do is set up our next flip time. Our next flip time is next uh, flip chance, excuse me, flip chance uh, is going to be equal to um, time dot time plus our flip time. And we've already got that set up up above. All right. Our flip time is right here. So every, in our case, five seconds, uh, there is a possibility that we are going to flip. Bam, bam. Make it nice and neat. Bam, bam, bam. All right. So there is a, a, a chance. Every time it comes through here, it's going to check and say, OK, every five seconds, in our case, there's a chance that it might flip. And the chances are 50%. All right. Great. Now what we have to do is actually write our actually write our flip facing code. So I'm going to go down here beneath the update and I'm going to start off by saying void because it's a void. Why is this popped out like that? It shouldn't be void flip facing I called it. Bam. All right, not like that, like this. And boom. Now this should all be backed up. I don't know why it's popped out. We're going to find out. This is why right here. Boop, boop. There we go. Back this out. Get this right before, because otherwise I'm going to get some errors. All right, there we go. That's all working now. So if, so each turn is going to do this. No, this is wrong. I'm doing it like this. I'm doing it wrong. Sorry, guys. Bam. Bam. And that's how I want it to be. All right, that's good. So every time, uh, if, if the time is greater than the flip chance, Come in here, check and see if it's flipped. If it's not, uh, if it does, do it so, etc., and then set the next flip time. All right, sorry about that. That is all set now. All right, flip facing. Now, basically, what we want to do in this code is actually flip our character around. All right, we don't want to do it unless we can. So we don't want to do it if it's if it's actually charging. So the first thing we're gonna check and see is if we can flip. So if we can't flip, so you can do that little that little exclamation point means don't can, what did I call it? Did I saw call it can flip? Yeah, can flip. Okay, so if it's not can flip, then I want to just return. Get out of here. Return from this function. Don't do anything. I think I'm missing something here because it's still giving me an error. I don't know why. That looks fine. All right, if can flip, then return. All right, so far, so good. If, however, uh, we want to actually flip, we're going to keep going. So first thing, float. And we're going to call this facing x. So which direction is it facing the x? We're going to determine that right now. If the graphic itself is equal to, is it called the graphic? What did I call it? Enemy graphic. If enemy graphic uh, dot transform or dot local scale, because we're not actually flipping this thing here. We're not actually rotating it, right? Remember, we're doing a multiplication negative across the, uh, across the x-axis. Local x local scale dot x if that is if that okay that's what it is right so find this first of all which direction is it face, facing then 
uh, facing x is going to equal to, oh no, sorry, is going to be times equal, remember this is a short form, negative 1f. So basically, I'm taking whatever state it's currently in, whatever, whatever the local scale of the x is, and I'm flipping it in, in the negative. All right, so if it was positive, it becomes negative. If it's negative, it becomes positive. So far, so good. Now, we want to actually physically do that to the, the graphic itself. So enemy graphic is going to be equal to, oh, sorry, sorry, the transform dot local scale x is going to be equal to, now we're going to actually do the flip, it's going to be equal to the new vector 3, because uh, once again the transform is a three-dimensional uh, three vector, uh, it's going to be equal to facing x, all right, that's our new, our new facing, and then the rest is going to be exactly the same, so enemy, uh, enemy graphic why is it not finishing up here? Enemy graphic dot transform dot uh, local scale dot y and exactly the same thing. Enemy graphic transform local scale dot z paste local scale dot z z. All right, close that off. All is good. Bam. Uh, the last thing we want to do is now change the, the original bool. Um, so our facing right is going to be equal to equal to not facing right, and that's racing facing right. All right, there we go. Uh, that is our entire flip function. So basically what this is saying now, the flip function, come in here. If we can't flip, then leave right away. If we can flip, then find what our local scale currently is, invert it, and then add that back into our transform local scale. All right, so far, so good. We are, I can flip around now, and everything is looking pretty nice. We have a couple of small additions to make now. We want to have certain things occur. Whenever the character enters this, we want something to happen. Whenever the character stays within this, we want something to happen. And lastly, when the character exits, we want something to happen as well. All right, so whenever they're coming into, uh, staying within, or exiting the, the collider, we want something very specific to happen. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to determine what happens when the character enters. When the character enters the collider, uh, our trigger collider, and let's put that, uh, let's put it below uh, start and update. Actually, let's put it right down here below update. Boom, boom. Um, when, our, when our player character enters the collider, the trigger collider, uh, we want our bore to stop and face our player. So first thing we have to do, avoid on trigger enter 2D, uh, and this is our, we need a collider, there's a collider, 2D coming in here, collider, where is it, collider 2D, and we'll call it other, boom, 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 all right, so the first thing we have to do is, is determine whether or not uh, what's entered this collider is actually the player, so if our other, which is the collider up there, other.tag uh, equals, and our tag for our player is player. We set that up previously so we could easily identify our player. So if it is our player, then we want to do something. What do we want to do? If we're facing if we're facing the player, we don't want to do anything. If we're not facing the player, we want to make sure we're turning around. So if uh, if we are facing right, if we are facing right and the other transform, other dot transform dot position dot x. So now we're looking at where where is this player? So if I'm facing right, which means I am looking to the right, and the player's position is is less. So if the player's x position is behind us, so less than, if their x value is less than my x value, that means I'm facing the wrong way. So if it's less than that, then I want to transform, oh sorry, what am I saying? <laughs> if it's less than the my, my transform, transform dot position, ah, why'd you do that? Little t transform dot 
position dot x. So if if the other transform is behind me somewhere and I'm facing the wrong way, that and I'm facing right, that means I'm facing the wrong way. So what I want to do immediately, I want to flip facing. Bam. All right. That's the first time I want to flip facing. Now if I'm facing left and the character is more right than I am, then again, I want to flip facing. So I can do it like this. Let me do it like this. I'm going to add this in here. I'm going to do this, boom, boom, just to make it nice and neat. And I'm going to say else if, and once again, if I am not facing right, so if my bad guy is facing left, so not facing right is left. If I'm not facing, uh, if I'm facing left, uh, then, uh, and, 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 and the other dot transform dot position dot x is greater than where I'm standing. My transform, please just give me the little t option. Transform dot, freaking little t. Transform dot position dot x. So if it's, if it's on the other side of me, then again, what do I want to do? I want to flip facing. All right, so those are the two circumstances that I want to flip facing. All right, and I'm just going to add in this to make it nice and neat for you guys. Bam. And bam. Now, those are the two circumstances what I want that I want to happen. Now, he the the player has actually entered into uh, entered into my danger zone. So, I don't want to be able to flip. After I've done this, I don't want to be able to flip anymore. So, I'm going to set right here. I'm going to set can flip uh, equal to false. False. All right. So can flip is equal to false. So once I'm facing the right way, I don't want to flip anymore. I just want to keep running until I can't run anymore. All right. I also want to set my charge. My what did I call it? Did I call it charge charging? What did I call it? Bull charging. I want to set my charging equal to true because once he's come in there, I'm going to charge him. That's it. All right. And then I got to determine when I'm going to actually start running. So start charge time is going to be equal to the current time, time dot time, plus my charge time. So it's going to give charge time. It's going to give my player a few seconds to actually determine, uh-oh, I'm in trouble here. He's going to see the guy flip, and he's going to say, whoa, I'm in trouble, and it's going to give him a chance to react. All right, I just don't want him running right away. Uh, I want the player to have a little bit of an opportunity to, to be able to avoid the charge. All right, so that's what I want to happen as soon as the character comes into my trigger zone. All right? When the character stays in the trigger zone, I want something else to happen. So it's going to be void. I'll just copy this whole thing. Void on trigger stay. Paste. Void on trigger stay 2D instead of on trigger enter. Boom. Uh, and now what I want to do, I, what do I want to do if, if, uh, if it stays in there, I want to charge him. I want to start running directly at him. So first of all, make sure that the thing in there is still our our other uh, dot tag is still our player. All right, great. Uh, and if it is, we're going to keep on going. So if it is, do some stuff. All right, great. What we're going to do is if our charge time. Uh, is greater than the current time we can charge. So if our charge, start charge, is that what it's called it? Start charge time, yes, is greater than or, or, or equal to our time dot time, good, then we're going to start our charge. We're this guy's in trouble now. Uh, let me close it off. Bam. Um, if that's the case, then if we are not uh, facing right, so this is going to this is going to be this is actually where we start our our motion. So if we're not facing right, I want to apply I want to increase our velocity in one direction and if, if so if we're facing left increase in one increase our velocity in one way, if we're facing right increase our velocity in the opposite direction. So if we're facing if we're not facing right, if we're not why is this not facing all right. So if we're not facing right, then I want the enemy RB, we've already defined it. We've already defined our enemy RB uh, dot add force. I'm doing this strictly with forces. So instead of just changing instantaneous velocity, 
whoops, what did I do here? Dot add force. Um, instead of just changing an instantaneous velocity in this situation, I'm going to add a a force to this character. So it's going to start pushing. So that might give the opportunity to fall off the edge. All right. Uh, and I'm going to say new vector two, and it's going to be the negative direction, negative one. I want to go behind me, comma zero, and I'm going to multiply this entire thing times my enemy. No, nope, my enemy. What did I call it? Enemy, what did I call? Oh, enemy speed. Enemy speed. All right, so this is going to get me moving in the appropriate direction at enemy speed. All right, perfect. Now, the next thing else, if I am facing right, so anything else actually else, if I'm not facing left, I am facing right, then my, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add a force, copy, and paste this. I'm going to add a force going in the positive direction. Okay? So far, so good. Uh, and the last thing I want to do in this, because I'm actually now physically moving, is I want to change my enemy animator. Enemy animator. I actually want to update my, my bool that gets me charging. So I want to actually start the animation working. Set bool. Uh, and the bool I want to set is. I think I called it is is charging. I think that's what I called it. I hope it is. Uh, and I want to set it to charging. So whatever my charging is. And in this case, we already know it's positive. It, it's it's uh, up here. It's true. All right. Charging. So now we've actually got this thing running in the proper direction, and we've got it actually uh, moving in the animation as it's supposed to. Let me save this file. Save. Great. Now, because we used forces here, we used the add force and not the changing of the of the velocity. We really have to go through, and we want to make sure that let's go back to our character for a second here. Let's go back to our our bore, boop, uh, and we want to make sure that our rigid body actually has some linear drag. and And what this linear drag is going to do is it's going to make sure that after we apply a force, once the force stops, this this uh, character will slowly, slowly start to uh, start to reduce its speed. All right, and and the linear drag, it, uh, it's going to be a number that you have to kind of determine on your own. Uh, I'm going to use a value of one right now and see how it looks to see how much he slows down. Uh, but the linear drag means that that after the force is applied, uh, left on its own, this thing will eventually slow down. Okay, it'll eventually come to a stop. All right, and I might want to change that now that I'm thinking about it. That might be causing a problem. <laughs> Anyway, let me think about that for a minute. For now, that's how we're going to leave it, and that way this thing here can stop moving in one direction or the other. Uh, I just want to make sure, though, later on. Anyway, guys, yeah, leave it like that for now. Uh, and the last thing we're going to do, now that I've got that set like that, the last thing we want to do is we want to determine what happens if our player character uh, leaves my danger zone. If he leaves danger zone, I don't want to charge anymore. All right, so I'm going to grab on player. I'm going to grab this again. Copy it and paste it down here. Paste, and it's going to be exit this time. Exit 2D. Once again, we have our other collider. All right, and the very, very first thing we're going to do is make sure that it is still our player. Copy. I'm going to paste this right here. All right, so move back, you. All right, if our other tag is equal to player, then we are going to we're going to do something. All right, so if, if the 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 object that has left our danger zone is actually the player. Then what do we want to do? We want to first of all, uh, we want to first of all stop running, right? That's what we want to do. So the first thing we can do is we're going to say can flip because now he's out of our danger zone is equal to true. So once again, we can start flipping back and forth. All right. If he ends up behind us, we can flip that way. Uh, our charging is going to be equal false because. He's no longer in our danger zone, and we're no longer seeing him. We're no longer scared. All right. We want to instantly set our enemy velocity. Once he's left our danger zone, we're going to instantly set our enemy our velocity to zero. Uh, so our enemy, and this actually makes me think that I don't enemy dot velocity is going to be equal to a new vector, and it's going to be all zeros. Zero f comma zero f.
That means instantly set our velocity to zero. So we instantly start stop charging, which means that I probably don't want to have a linear drag here. You know what? I'm going to set this to zero. <laughs> So ignore what I said before. I think it'll still work exactly the same. I think that was a mistake I made before. We're going to find out. We're going to find out. Uh, all right. And now the last thing I want to do is I want to set my myself back to idle. Right? I'm going to go from my charge to my idle. So enemy uh, animator dot set bool. Uh, and it's our quotations is charging quotations comma to our charging which we've already set to false charging which we've set to false above so that is immediately going to stop us from actually running now I think file save that is all we're going to need to make this character actually work alright let's go across here <coughs> now there's obviously oh nenemy nenemy so that's on 54 54 uh, enemy right here. Enemy, file save. First thing we have to do is make sure we have no errors in our thingy dingy here. Uh, enemy graphic that I'd write that a million times. Oops. Clear. All right. So apparently I wrote enemy a bunch of times. All right. This is on 73. 73. 73. Down lower here. 73. Enemy, enemy, right there. Enemy, file save. This is all part of coding, guys. Finding out exactly what's wrong here. I cannot modify a type of return value. Transform local scale. I don't think I did that. 73. Let's see what I did wrong here. 73 against enemy transform dot x is equal to new vector. Oh, this should not be local scale. It should just be local scale, not local scale x. No, local scale dot x. That's right enemy local scale vector why is it a vector 3 here this is actually wrong right here for sure uh, our enemy scale local scale it should be it shouldn't just be our x file save I want my scale to be that alright let's see bam clear this there we go alright yeah I didn't want it just to just be the x obviously I wanted I'm using a vector 3 and I want it to be the x y and z so just local scale all right, so all of it looks good. Let's add a new location for our killer boar to be on. Uh, let's go to our project. Uh, let's go to our prefabs. Let's go over here, and we're going to add another long platform. Uh, and this should be at uh, y is equal to negative 5.21. 5.21. Great. And I'm going to take my enemy boar, killer boar, I'm going to move him over here. I'm going to drop him down so he's where he's supposed to be. Actually, move all this very, very much closer. Let's, and then you know what we're going to do for now? We're going to go like this so it gives me a little bit of room to come on and not actually have him charge. All right. When I hit play, let's make sure this is going to work. There's our guy. Oh, you know what? I'm going to stop this for a second. I'm going to turn on mute. Let's start this again. Let's run and jump. Run and jump over. There's our guy right there. He's idling like we want him to. Let's watch him for a second and make sure he flips. You know what I didn't do? <laughs> I forgot to set up all my information about my killer boar. So enemy speed is going to be 6. Uh, charge time is going to be, let's say he'll charge after 1 second. And the enemy graphic is our simple AI boar. Boom. All right, let's try that again. Play. I'm going to run. Jump. Jump. Oh, I hurt some damage there. OK. There, he's flipping the opposite direction already, so that's good. That's a good sign. He's working like he should. And let's see what happens if I get a little closer. I didn't actually apply a vector. He's not actually moving. He's running like hell, which is awesome. So let me go figure out what I did wrong. All right, guys? I will be right back. Okay, guys. After some research, I figured out what went wrong. Some of it's my fault, and some of it I don't think is my fault. <laughs> Anyway, let's take a look. First of all, um, last episode, we built ourselves our killer boar. And our killer boar has an animator associated with it and this simple animation uh, uh, node tree right here. Now, uh, what I did wrong is in both transitions, both transitions still had an exit time. It shouldn't. It shouldn't have an exit time. Turn off the exit time, and that'll get your boar running immediately. That's good. Second thing... Uh, 
I guess I've closed it. Let's go back to our killer bore and open up our enemy movement controller. In the enemy movement controller, um, I had this reversed. In the on trigger stay uh, event, I actually had it said it said start charge time is greater than time. Obviously, that's not right. Uh, it really should say start charge time is less than time, and that's going to mean that uh, once time is greater than our charge time, start charging. <laughs> So I had that reversed. And the last thing that was I thought was very odd is, is at some point, and for some reason, the, the on-trigger stay events stop registering. Now, both of my rigid bodies are set to continuous uh, collision, so that's not it. I checked that right away. That's not it. I looked it up on the internet, and there's a whole bunch of complaints online about how uh, when your character, when, when, whenever your player is moving, it's detecting. When it's not moving, it stops detecting. That's basically what I had here as well. And what I, what I noticed was that after a certain amount of time, it just stops registering the on-stay events. So what I did is I reduced my charge time to 0.5, all right? And in doing so, making it, it used to be a second, I reduced it to half a second, and everything now works like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna jump over here, I'm gonna run, see if I can't get this guy charging. Come charge me, charge me. Half second later, he's charging, he's running, he's trying to get me, now watch what happens, boom. I don't want that to happen. You see what happened there? This guy ran and he, he jumped into this hole and he didn't fall through. I actually want him to fall through there. All right, I want him to fall all the way down. So we're gonna fix that right now. That's the last thing we're gonna do in today's episode. We're gonna make sure that he is falling all the way through this, this uh, spikes, all right? If he jumps off the edge, I want him gone. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. Uh, and and I think right now the easiest way is for me to make a couple of changes within this this enemy spikes and uh, it kind of makes me sad I'll think of a better way of doing it later on but for now we're gonna do it like this we're gonna add a new script first thing we're gonna do we're gonna go to our our camera and we're gonna say add component and I wanna add a new script and I think that I'm gonna call this thing uh, fall through it doesn't matter what you call it it's just basically a script that's gonna tell my colliders some of my colliders to ignore each other so I'm gonna call it fall through and I'm going to Double click to open it up and get rid of this thing for a minute. Boom, boom. All right, it's only going to have one line of code in it. Here in the in the start event, uh, I'm going to say physics 2D because it's a physics 2D thing I'm adding, and I want to ignore layer. So dot ignore layer collision. So this is basically the function I want to use. This takes two parameters. It takes a uh, it takes two layers. Basically, it says have this layer, ignore this layer. Uh, so I could set it up so that so that um, my shootable layer, and maybe I will later on. I'm going to add this code for now so you can see the concept, and then maybe I'll, I'll think about how to do it better in a minute. Um, I'm going to add a layer mask. We did this before. Dot name to layer, and it's the shootable layer. So I want my shootable layer, my shootable layer, to ignore the same thing. Layer mask dot name to layer. And I want it to ignore my shootable layer. All right. I could have just put the number in here. I could have just said whatever layer 10 or 11, 9 or whatever it was. I could have put that here, but this is that more robust. And that way, if something gets moved around or you've done it differently than me, uh, then this will all work out. I'm going to save this, file save. And I've put this on the camera because I know the camera is going to be in the scene when I start and it's going to run that function. And once it's been run once, we're all set. So when I say play now, oh, I did something wrong. What did I do wrong? I put a semi I put a colon instead of a semicolon. File save. Let's try her again. Play. Uh play. Alright, here we go. Let's run jump. Run jump. Come get me, boar. He's charging me. I'm running away. Oops, I'm on the spikes. Am I close enough? No. Run. Jump. Okay. Watch what happens. Oh, he didn't fall through. Oh, he didn't fall through for one reason. Because I had originally set this thing up, my spikes, I said I had to make changes to my spikes. My spikes, unfortunately, are set to shootable on, uh, are shootable on the top, but on the bottom, the spike surface on the bottom was set to ground. And that's so my character could land on it. I actually want to set this up to be something else. I want to set it up to be uh, shootable as well. So when I say play now, watch what happens. Boom. Boom. Come get me. Come get me, boar. Bam, and he falls through. All right. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to change my spikes. Uh, and I'm going to apply this. 
and I'm going to change my uh, my other thing as well, my whatever this is called. My spiky rock, the rock surface was set to ground, and I'm going to set them both to shootable for now, and I'm going to apply it. All right, guys, that is the end of that episode. It might have been a little bit of confusion in there, and I'm sorry about that. I'm going to do some more research and figure out why the OnStay 2D events stop registering after a certain amount of time. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Making the changes that I told you, though, uh, will make everything work exactly as it should. Our bore works wonderfully. Uh, we've got ourselves, as long as you've dragged it over and put in your prefabs, you're going to have a killer bore that you can at any time, where's my prefab, at any time you can add additional bore to your scene. Bam, we've got two bores now, just like that. Um, so we've got ourselves moving enemies, we've got ourselves stationary enemies. Uh, in, a, in an episode or two, we're going to move on to... Uh, shooting enemies, all right? I think ne next episode, I think we're going to do drops so we can have our boars drop things, treasure, or whatever, health, or whatever. Uh, we're going to do that next. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. If you didn't, let me know with a thumbs down and tell me why in the comments you didn't like it. Uh, and, you know, I'll do my best to make changes. All right, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.